Hello, everyone, and welcome once again uh, to the Train Aid HQ. My name is Nick, and in today's video, we are looking at the Level 4 Certificates in Education and Training. So on behalf of the uh, Train Aid team, uh, welcome. The purpose of today's video is to give you lots of uh, help and advice with regards to the Level 4 Certificate in Education and Training. So if you are considering the qualification or if you have enrolled onto the Level 4 course, the purpose of this video is to give you an overview about what is expected on the qualification and also to see whether or not the, the qualification is right for you. Um, so once again, uh, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, to receive the latest alerts and updates from the team. Um, so welcome to our our level four uh, meeting. So as mentioned, we're going to have a conversation um, about the, the core structure to discuss what's involved. OK, and we're going to analyze what makes a good level four uh, CET learner, that certificate in education and training for short. We're going to look at the role of the mentor how the written assignments work, uh, what teaching evidence is required uh, to pass the qualification and also progression areas as well. Um, as you can see, the awarding body for the, the qualification is Highfield, okay, Highfield qualifications. And in regards to the level four certificate in education and training, you can take as long as you need to pass this online self-paced qualification. So in regards to the course structure, um, there is a blend of six written assignments and also a portfolio of teaching evidence as well. There are six written assignments. So units one uh, to unit six contain a blend of, of different uh, teaching areas. OK, so the course is going to look at the roles, responsibilities and relationships in education and training. Unit two looks at the importance of planning, so planning your lessons. Unit three looks at delivery, so different teaching delivery styles. Unit four looks at assessment and the different assessment methods involved within teaching and training. Unit five looks at resources and unit six looks at inclusive practice. So when you begin the course, you will be posted the level four certificate in education and training textbook by Anne, Anne Gravels. And that is going to be a very useful resource when comp completing those six written assignments. As a ballpark figure, um, the suggested word count is somewhere between three to 4,000 words uh, per assignment. However, you can write as much detail as you wish. There's no official word count or cutoff point. So you can write as much detail, as much information as you wish. We have a, a, a really supportive marking team as well. And then their email is cet at train aid.co.uk. You can send in your assignments as many times as possible to get some supportive feedback as well. The marking team do work to five working days and they'll give you feedback on uh, what areas within your assignment are going well. Uh, what uh, what assignment criteria you have passed and any areas for development as well. So we don't need to stand still with the qualification. So whilst an assignment is being marked, you can move on to the next one and we'll obviously give you feedback within those five working days as well. So within your course journey, you can work on your teaching evidence, of course, or your written assignments or both, and you can take as long as you need um, to pass uh, the six assignments and also the teaching evidence as well. So within the theory element of this course, there are six written assignments, as mentioned, but there's also a portfolio of teaching evidence as well. Now, the teaching evidence uh, needs to be uh, to be created uh, by yourself within your teaching role. You need to uh, log 30 teaching hours and you need to be observed three times by a qualified teacher. 
Okay, so this is the electronic teaching evidence portfolio, and all of your teaching evidence can be submitted to the marking team via email or WeTransfer or OneDrive as well. Okay, and you can send in your teaching evidence uh, throughout your level four journey as many times as possible. If you're new to teaching, then of course you can use the train aid uh, templates to support you, perhaps with the creation of your lesson plans. However, you can also use your own. Uh, company or organizations templates as well if you work perhaps within a school or college or a teaching sector okay so that is the overview of our course now a common question that we do get asked here at train aid what if i have already completed a level three award in education and training okay so many candidates have achieved the level three uh, award in education and training the level three petals qualification um, if you have completed the level three award in education and training, fantastic. You can make your level four CET teaching course shorter. OK, this means that you do not need to complete unit one. OK, so unit one is understanding the roles, responsibilities and relationships in education and training. So you don't need to complete that. OK, so you can progress on to, to unit two which is planning to meet the needs of learners in education and training. So that's a key benefit of completing the level three award in education and training. You can springboard onto unit two, once again, making your qualification shorter. Okay. So if you do have level three award in education and training or the petals course, please do make us aware when you are enrolling onto the level four course. OK, now, um, who is the level four certificate in education and training for? OK, that's a very, very good question. So you need to be teaching either part time, full time or you might be volunteering within the post-14 sector. And what that means is that you're teaching to learners age 14 or higher. Now, you must be teaching to groups or classes of learners. So one-to-one -one teaching does not count towards the 30 hours of teaching practice, okay? So um, if you're considering the Level 4 teaching course, make sure that you are teaching to, to groups or classes of learners as well. The level four is a fantastic qualification. You can, of course, secure a full time teaching position within a post 14 or a post 16 uh, teaching environment within the within a college sector or a sixth form sector as well. So there are many progression opportunities as well. You must have an in-house mentor to support your progress, okay? Um, so every successful level four learner does really have an in-house mentor so to support them with their course progress. And the mentor will observe you on three separate one-hour lesson observations. So that's very important. And we'll talk about that a little bit more within our meeting, okay? Um, if you do not have an in-house mentor, mentor okay if you don't have someone who has a level four teaching qualification or higher then of course train aid can step in we can observe you okay however the observations cost 60 pounds including vat for uh, an observation to be done live over zoom or teams as well but of course if you have an in-house mentor fantastic they can do the three uh, lesson observations as well. How do the assignments work? So there are six written assignments to complete and using the, the course uh, textbook, okay, and also the video guides on our YouTube channel and the assignment support guides. Um, these will help you to complete the six written assignments as well. My advice is to really make your assignments your, your own. You can write in the first person, the third person, 
or both. And we've put together some really handy assignment support guides with lots of scaffolding questions to really help you uh, when completing your assignments, perhaps from home as well. Now, with your assignments, you can include images of your teaching practice. You can include screenshots of resources, um, anything that you're using within your teaching and training at the moment. So please do feel free to include them. We do like to see um, images as well. But once again, you can take as long as you need to complete the assignments. Um, they can be written in the first or the third person. And please use our, our YouTube videos, our guides, the assignment support documents to really help you complete those six written assignments. OK, um, do I need to use references for, for each assignment? That is a very good question. So we do suggest that you are looking to to include references uh, within your assignment. So when you embark on the, the teaching course, you'll be provided with uh, a reference list. But of course, you will be provided uh, with your course textbooks. And we would recommend using our websites, journals from um, the, the reading list. OK, um, all of these are free websites and resources that you can use uh, for your level four teaching course. Uh, we'd also recommend that perhaps you reference from uh, a company handbook, uh, any company policies. You can have a look on the, the news websites for um, any anything which is happening within your area as well. So you can include perhaps the latest changes and developments within your subject area as well. And we do recommend using a Harvard reference system as well. OK, so referencing is something that you will need to do uh, with your level four teaching course. However, if you're new to assignment writing, please do not worry because we're here to help you every step of the way. And we can give you lots of help and advice when it comes to, to referencing. So what support is available uh, with regards to writing the assignments? Well, as mentioned, we have our YouTube channel, so please do sign up and to, to keep um, keep up to date with our YouTube videos as well. We have the um, pre-recorded assignment tutorials. We have the, the PDF um, assignment support slides. There is, um, of course, support available over the phone and uh, through a, a Zoom meeting uh, if required. So you can reach out to the train aid team if you're a learner and we can book in perhaps a meeting with you to discuss your course. Um, but also that the marking team do work to five working days to turn around marking. So you can send in those written assignments as many times as you wish to get some formative feedback as well. In regards to the level four certificate in education and training course certificate, it's always good to show you this. So if you're considering the course, if you've just signed up, welcome. Um, so as we can see, our certificate, the awarding body is, is high field qualification. So this is a fully accredited um, an off-qual regulated certificate. So as you can see here, the title is Highfield Level 4 Certificate in Education and Training. So the qualification is yours for life. It does not expire. It does not need to be uh, renewed once you achieve this uh, qualification as well. OK, um, a common question is, do you have direct claim status with Highfield qualifications? We certainly do. Um, and your certificate after the IV process can take up to 14 days um, for the certificate to be generated. And this will be sent to the booker of your course. Um, so just on the, the slide there, we can see, obviously, this is the, the second um, certificate. You'll have your certificate front sheet and you'll also have a second sheet with the, the unit breakdown as well. Uh, showing the the six written assignments that you have completed. OK, so just remember, um, the certificate is always emailed to the booker of the course. The certificate is an electronic PDF certificate, which is emailed to you. Uh, Highfield no longer send printed copies due to their environmental policy. However, your certificate can be printed as well. 
A common question um, I get asked here at Train Aid is how long do, do learners take to complete the level four teaching course? Well, it's an online self-paced qualification. Um, the average time that someone achieves a level four is, I would say, somewhere between five to six months. There's no official deadline. OK, um, you can take um, perhaps one to three months if you are looking to get through the qualification quite quickly. Other learners might take nine to 12 months, but I'd say five to six is the average, but you can take as long as you need to complete the course. That is no problem at all. Progression areas. So after the level four certificate in education and training, you could consider the level five diploma. OK, so if you've enjoyed the level four teaching course and want to progress to your full teacher status, then the level five diploma is the course for you. And once again, many people say, Nick, if I achieve the level four, what benefits are there? OK, can I make the level five teaching course shorter? Well, the answer is yes. Um, if you complete the level four teaching course, there are some benefits. You can um, obviously um progress on to level five and <clears throat> there are five written assignments to complete instead of seven okay there are six lesson observations to complete instead of eight okay and there are 80 um, teaching hours to be logged instead of 100. So by doing the level four teaching course first, you can RPL some of uh, the course units and teaching evidence, and you can in fact make the course shorter as well. As we can see the certificate um, on the screen there, our awarding body for the level five is Teaching Qualifications UK, otherwise known as TQ UK. Once again, this is a, an official and regulated accredited qualification. Okay, so um, just to explain further, this is the level five diploma in education and, and training checklist. As you can see, the areas highlighted in yellow, well, this is showing where your, your evidence will come into play if you've achieved the level four teaching qualification. Um, and once again, it does make that level five uh, qualification shorter. But if you would like to arrange a call with one of the team to discuss the level five and the progression from the level four, that's not a problem. We can book in a phone call or a Zoom or a Teams call to discuss the qualification in greater detail. That's not a problem at all. Furthermore, if you do um, obviously progress onto the level five, uh, you can go for your QTLS status when the time is right. Um, you must have a level five teaching qualification in order to progress onto QTLS. You will not be able to go for your QTLS status with the level four alone. You must achieve your level five diploma as well. But any questions regarding level five and QTLS, please do get in contact or watch uh, watch one of our uh, videos explaining the level five and QTLS uh, process. Now let's get back onto the level four. Okay. Now successful level four learners have a designated in-house mentor. So it's always good to meet up with your mentor on a regular basis. And the purpose of that is really sort of to check in with you to see how your level four is coming along. Your mentor could uh, proofread your assignments before they're sent into our marking team here. That is something that the, the mentor can do. But your mentor does have some really important roles. Um, they must sign the teaching hours log. So once your 30 hours of teaching practice has been logged, they will need to sign to authenticate that, that you have uh, taught to either, th uh, to either uh, groups or classes of learners. So 30 hours must be signed off by them. Your mentor must also complete three lesson observations, okay, and they must also sign and date the three uh, self-evaluation forms. That's another important factor which we'll come on to later in the video. Now, if you do have an in-house mentor supporting you, fantastic, they must have a level four teaching qualification or higher. OK, very important. And we almost uh, we must receive a copy uh, from 
um, your mentor as well. So please do send in a copy of their certificate and we'll save this to your file. OK, so as we can see, um, for the mentor, they must have either level four certificate in education and training. They could have kettles. They could have a level five. They could have dettles. They could have a PGCE qualification, QTS or QTLS. If they have any of those teaching qualifications, fantastic. They can carry out those three separate one hour observations. Now, what qualifications are not acceptable? So if your mentor has a level three award in education and training or level four petals or any leadership and management qualification, if they are an assessor or an IQA, well, unfortunately, they, they can't observe you. They must have a level four teaching qualification or higher to be able to observe you. So that's very, very important. So if in doubt, please do get in contact with us and we can have a chat about that if you wish. Excuse me. And once again, folks, please do send in a copy of your mentor certificate to CET at train a.co.uk. Another question we have about the level four is, can I have different observers? Well, you certainly can. So obviously you have three lesson observations to complete. They can be different observers. OK, so your one observer doesn't have to do all three. They can be different, but we must get a copy of the observer certificate before you carry out um, the lesson observation. Hopefully that's nice and clear. So once again, um, this is an online self-paced qualification. The onus is on you, the individual, to, to complete uh, your course in your own time. If you are needing support, please do reach out to us. We have a number of different networks. We have our office team. We have the marketing team uh, available and also have a look at the YouTube channel as well. So please do reach out to us at any stage during your level four journey and we can obviously help you. But my advice for any level four learner is to set your own deadlines, set your own goals to submit your assignments and your teaching evidence and always keep your manager or your mentor in the loop of your progress as well. Okay, so in regards to the level four uh, program, um, we always arrange a one hour welcome meeting. Okay, that's very important where you'll meet us and we'll have a chat um, just to welcome you to the course program. And we also advise that your mentor is available for the Zoom meeting as well to discuss the level four teaching course in greater detail. So please do reach out to us when you first sign up to the course. So we've talked uh, in great detail about the six written assignments. We've talked about the, uh, the, the mentor and their role within the qualification. Uh, we've looked at progression routes as well. But now is the time to look at the teaching evidence for your level four certificate in education and training. So there's 11 criteria to, to, to achieve your, your portfolio. And as you can see, we have a, a teaching evidence checklist going from number one all the way to number 11 as well. So once again, my advice, if you are working within your current teaching role, you can use your own templates, you can use your own systems uh, in order to send in evidence to the marking team. OK, if you don't have any access to te any teaching material, don't worry, you can use our templates provided within your course instructions to help you. OK, so let's have a look at each criteria one by one to give you some further information on what you need to do to pass your teaching evidence portfolio. So number one is the teaching hours log. OK, this is nice and simple. You need to log 30 teaching hours. You must be teaching to groups or classes of learners. So a group could be perhaps three learners. OK, a class. Well, that could be 20 learners. OK, and those are all fine. Teaching hours, unfortunately, cannot be one to one. You need to log 30 teaching hours. OK, and you can complete the teaching log 
as provided by train aid you can input the date of the lesson the course the lesson title perhaps and also the time as well so the time that you spent within the classroom uh, you can of course be teaching online live over zoom or teams so you can be uh, teaching um, live courses over the internet that's fine uh, but you need to log 30 teaching hours and this must be signed by a manager as well okay now you can either complete the teaching hours log or you can send in a copy of your timetable if you're teaching regularly and this will be used instead of the teaching hours log so you'll either submit your teaching hours log or your timetable as well now just remember the teaching hours log must be signed electronically by a manager to approve that you have logged 30 teaching hours now let me just show you an example here so this is a very basic um teaching hours log example that i've created i've logged 30 hours i've logged over 30 hours by by the way um and you need to input your name and also um an electronic signature okay so i've done this for myself and my my colleague my manager tom has very kindly signed off these these teaching hours as well so in my teaching hours log i have a variety of of different courses there now you can of course log any 30 teaching hours you can of course repeat lessons that's absolutely fine but you will need to log those 30 teaching hours okay and get it signed off by a manager an electronic signature is what we're looking for rather than typed if your manager doesn't have uh, an electronic signature do not worry they can uh, send in a confirmation email to us to say that they they have approved your 30 hours of teaching that they can confirm that um, alternatively as mentioned you can send in um, a teaching timetable so as we can see here this is a timetable um, and that's showing your your teaching hours per week and once again, uh, we need uh, a manager to, to, to sign off your teaching hours log. So we're also looking for an electronic signature from them or a confirmation email to say that you've taught 30 hours. But once again, folks, we're either looking for the completed teaching log or the timetable submitted to us with a confirmation of those 30 teaching hours. OK, so hopefully criteria one is nice and clear. Just moving on to criteria two. This is the syllabus or the specification syllabus specification. It's the same thing. So it's a document which provides the reader with lots of information about the course or qualification that you are delivering on. OK, these can often be found on perhaps an awarding body website within a college or a school intranet. It can be found perhaps within a staff or a learner handbook. So what does it do? It provides the reader with lots of information about the course content, about the course aim, the objectives, the content and the assessment methods as well. Now, what is required for your level four teaching course? Well, we're looking for you to send us perhaps one or two examples of a syllabus or a specification. Uh, we're really keen to find out about what you are teaching. So you can teach your course subject specialism and please do send in a copy, um, either perhaps in a Word document or a PDF, okay? So any information on your qualification would be fantastic. So just to provide you with some further information, just on the screen here, I've taken the level four um, certificate in education and training um, this is a syllabus taken from from highfield uh, the highfield website and we have a range of of different information within um, the uh, the syllabus so we have the course level the qualification credits the guided learning hours the grading criteria the minimum age to begin the qualification the course delivery useful additional resources course duration the reading list and the course units as well so your um your syllabus that you send in it doesn't need to be that detailed but just the general information about the course would be fantastic to understand more about what you are teaching okay um the the course um syllabus can also contain 
uh, progression routes, um, the course units as well. And a common question is, uh, can I create my own syllabus? Can I create my own specification for the level four teaching course? Well, you absolutely can. So you can create or and submit your own syllabus. So if you are teaching your own bespoke courses, you can create a syllabus. Why not? So you can send that in and we will review this and we will get it marked for you. So that's not a problem if you're teacher, teaching your own unaccredited courses as well. OK, so hopefully criteria two is is nice and simple to understand. Any any questions, of course, please do reach out to us. Now, the next criteria is the scheme of work. Now, a scheme of work is what teachers and trainers use to, to outline their course okay it breaks down the course into different sections and it helps to show the beginning the middle and the end of the course so a scheme of work is uh, is very much a planning or a tracking document and it helps the, the teachers to perhaps show the date of the lesson the session title and the learning outcome the required resources the assessment methods used within the lessons and any remarks or reminders that the teacher Teacher needs to to tell the students as well so a scheme of work is really 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 useful okay when you're teaching or training and this will help you to stay on track with your subject delivery okay and what we're looking for is for you to submit one scheme of work from the course or qualification that you are teaching on now here just on our screen we have an example of a scheme of work so this is our level four scheme of work from one of our courses in in london we have a variety of sessions we we have the required resources the assessment methods and this is really uh vital information so we can see what we're covering each lesson and the outcomes as well so the scheme of work uh, provides the reader with the course aim, the objectives, um, the assessment methods used, all of this vital information. So it's really useful for a teacher or trainer. So it shows that they're not repeating themselves, okay, that the lessons are, are, are varied, they add variety, and it shows a clear beginning, a middle, and an end. Ultimately, the scheme of work helps you to keep on track as a teacher or trainer. So um, to pass your um, uh, section three um, of the, the teaching evidence, you need to submit one uh, scheme of work uh, from one of your courses or qualifications that you are delivering on. You can indeed submit your own scheme of work if you wish. So that's absolutely fine to do. Um, what if you do not use a scheme of work? Well, no problem at all. You can use the train aid template like you've seen in the video here, and you can submit that as part of your teaching evidence as well. So have a go at creating a scheme of work for the purpose of your level four uh, teaching qualification. The next section um, is lesson plans. OK, so teaching evidence criteria four is, is lesson plans. So this is the step down uh, from your scheme of work and lesson plans are guides. These are what teachers and trainers use perhaps on a day to day basis to help uh, the teaching of their lessons. OK, they are a vital tool because once again, they do help the teacher to stay on track of their teaching and of course they provide lots of information such as the aim the learning outcomes the timings learner activities resources inclusion stretch and challenge functional skills all of those things so it really does help the teacher to to break down the activities their approaches and they help the teacher if they're new to teaching a course as well they can see what they're teaching and, and how the lesson sh should be carried out so what we require from you um, is uh, some lesson plans which total 30 hours of planning okay so for your lesson plans um, please do include the dates uh, and perhaps the hours uh, within your lesson plan so they're nice and clear for us okay you might submit five lesson plans or 10 lesson plans if they total 30 hours of planning that is fantastic okay lesson plans don't need to be uh, too detailed okay so one to two pages is is more than enough 
for a lesson plan as it's highlighting the key points within your your lesson as well you can submit your own lesson plans or you can use the train a template to help you to create your own lesson plans and once again you can uh, repeat lesson plans as well. So you can, of course, repeat your lessons. If you are repeating your lessons to count towards your 30 hours, not a problem. Please put the dates. You've obviously um, repeated your lessons as well. That's absolutely fine to do. Now, one of the main criteria for your teaching um, portfolio is the three lesson observations. So once again, um, the lesson observations are to be carried out by a mentor. OK, so these are three separate one hour lesson observations. So these could be done at any stage during your course. If it was me, I would have uh, an observation at the start, somewhere in the middle, and also at the end of your course. So you can spread out your lesson observations. We do recommend a gap in between each lesson. So you've got time to improve upon uh, your, uh, your areas for development and the targets set by the observer. Once again, uh, the lesson observations are not graded, okay? They don't have an impact on the, the certificate. Now, the lesson observations are to be organized by yourself and uh, your observer, okay? Um, the ob observations really need to be a minimum of one hour. So a 15-minute observation will not count, okay? So when completing the lesson observation and, and booking it in with your observer, make sure you do say, you know, you, are, you have to observe me for a minimum of one hour. Once again, you can um, be observed by different people. That's absolutely fine. Just make sure you've sent in um, uh, an observer certificate to train aid well in advance for us to check as well. Um, and once again, the observer must have a minimum of a level four teaching qualification or higher. With regards to um, the self-evaluations, after every lesson observation, you must complete a self-evaluation form and you must, must complete three of these in order to pass your level four teaching course. Now, the self-evaluations look at your strengths, your areas for development and any actions, so any targets for you to improve on. For your next lesson observation, please do write these as soon as possible after your observation, because the, the memory of the lesson is, is fresh. OK, try to explain your strengths, your areas for development and any action points as well. Do avoid bullet points and write within sentences as well. So please pick out two to three strengths. What were you pleased with? Perhaps two to three areas for development and maybe one to two actions required required for you to improve uh, yourself for your next lesson observation. Now, just remember that the self-evaluation form must be signed by yourself and also the observer. What we're looking for is an electronic signature from you both rather than typed. OK, so three self-evaluations must be completed and must be signed as well. OK, so once again, just to reiterate, avoid bullet points, um, complete these as soon as possible and um, get them signed by a manager or mentor. OK, the person who has observed you does need to sign uh, these three documents. Criteria seven um, of our teaching portfolio is any initial and diagnostic uh, test. So initial assessments, diagnostic tests. Now, what are these? Um, these are carried out at the beginning of a course or qualification, or perhaps at the beginning of a new lesson, at the beginning of a new course unit, perhaps. Now, initial assessments are there to find out about your learner's uh, knowledge of the subject okay so they're they're there to sort of see your learner's baseline knowledge about your subject okay um about the the program for example that they're about to embark upon so without doing initial assessments uh learners could um, obviously fail a course they could really struggle with your course and it's, it's key that we do find out 
what they already know and we can support them on the course okay now what we are looking for within your level four teaching course is we're looking for you to tell us uh and and show us rather what um initial and diagnostic assessments you use within your own teaching so for example you could have an application form for your course it could be some interview uh, or discussion questions it could be an observation that learners have to perform before they come onto your course it could be any self-assessment activities or structured activities, any tests such as English, maths, ICT, digital skills tests, basic key skills builder test, BKSB, discussions, debates, quizzes, games, icebreaker activities, or any recap tests as well. So um, we are looking for you to submit to us examples of initial or diagnostic assessments. Okay, you can send in um, images or screenshots um, of any initial assessments, like the one on the screen, we have a course application form that is a classic uh, initial assessment. So try to perhaps send in and create five different examples of initial or diagnostic assessments, you can submit screenshots, photos, PDF documents of your initial or diagnostic assessments. And please do submit a written statement of how these are created, how these are used within your teaching practice um, as well. Criteria eight is um, individual learning plans. These are ILPs or one-to-one -one reviews. So as a teacher or trainer, it's vital that we do sit down with learners and speak to them on a one-to-one -one level about their course progress. So it's an opportunity to say to them, this is what's going well for you. Um, these are your area areas for development. And also just to have a chat, you know, um, what do they like about your course? What do they like about the qualification, what's going well for them. And this is your ability to set targets um, to your learners. Now, ILPs, one-to-one -one reviews, these are like miniature appraisals with your learners. Now, it's always good to give your learners a pat on the back or to give them some targets, some direction. And that is the purpose of an ILP. If you're teaching perhaps within a school or college, you might conduct multiple ILPs with your learners. Okay. If you're teaching day courses, you can conduct perhaps an ILP on a coffee break and just have a chat to your learner about what's going well for them and any targets you would like to, to give them as well. Now, to pass your level four teaching course, we're looking for you to be able to carry out these concepts of ILPs or one to one reviews. Now, we don't need to see any learner name, so please don't be worried there. But we are just looking for you to have the ability to sit down and perhaps have a 10 or a 15 minute chat with your learners to go through their progression route. So what's going well and, of course, any areas for development as well. So try to complete complete five ILPs. You can complete um, the, the table. Okay. You can use our um, ILP template, or you can use your own systems if you have your own ILP template as well. So do have a go of ILPs if you are new to that concept. Criteria nine of our portfolio is teaching resources. So we are looking for you to demonstrate to us what teaching resources you are using within your own teaching practice. So you can submit to us screenshots of resources. You can take photos of hard copy uh, resources. You can submit to us PowerPoint slides, handouts from courses, course textbooks or worksheets. And we're also looking for uh, for you to create a, a supporting Word document explaining how each resource is used within your your teaching practice. So you can submit to us different examples of resources, even a textbook. Well, that is a resource. OK, so you can take photos of resources. You can send us screenshots of YouTube videos if you use them within your teaching uh, practice. But we're looking for you to submit a variety of different uh, teaching resources. So try to aim for five uh, different teaching resources if you, you can here. 
Criteria 10 is communication with, with colleagues. This could be examples of emails, minutes of a meeting, uh, meeting agendas, any meetings that you've chaired as well. So we're looking for you to demonstrate to us that you are a confident communicator within a team of teachers or trainers. Now, for this criteria, you can send in to us screenshots of perhaps emails to colleagues. It could be minutes of a meeting, agendas, CPD requests as well, inset days that you've attended. Um, all of these show written and also verbal communication as well. So can you communicate within a team of teachers and trainers? Now, we don't need to see anything sensitive. That's uh, not what we're looking for but it's more your ability to communicate to fellow teachers and trainers. You can uh, take a screenshot of perhaps uh, an email to a colleague about a reminder about an upcoming, upcoming meeting. There's also, you, you can submit to us meeting agendas and uh, any, anything that you've attended in, in regards to meetings as well. So those are clear examples of communication there. So once again, do try and aim for five examples if you can here. And once again, you don't. we don't need to see anything sensitive. You can uh, blank any sensitive information if you wish, or just keep it to uh, very uh, broad emails. But once again, try to aim for, for a few different emails and five examples of communication there. Now, our final slide, um, our final criteria is learner feedback. So um, any teacher or trainer does need to reach out to their learners and to gain feedback on their course and how it's gone for them. So that's a hallmark of a great teacher, the ability to reach out and say, how did my lesson go today? Would you mind providing me with some feedback okay so we're looking for you to be able to reach out and gain feedback because that's the only way that you can improve as a teacher okay so um you can use um the the learner feedback form provided by train aid or you can use your own learner feedback systems in order to gain some feedback from your learners okay if you were to to send to us five completed learner feedback forms that will meet the criteria so if you gain feedback uh, from all of your learners from a class fantastic we can sign that off as complete we're not going to be looking at the learner feedback please don't be worried about that but it's more your ability to reach out to your learners and gain some feedback that is what you'll be uh, judged upon so once again you can submit to us paper-based uh, learner pe learner feedback forms uh, emails from your learners what they say about your teaching electronic uh, survey data any survey results as well or any annual review data that would class as learner feedback. Learner feedback can, of course, be anonymous. We don't need to see their names um, on the learner feedback form. So please reach out to your learners and just ask for some feedback based on your teaching as well. OK, wow, uh, we have come to the end of our level four welcome video. So if you have signed up to the course, fantastic. Welcome. Um, but if you're new here and you are just watching the video to get more of an idea of the level four teaching course, fantastic. Hopefully this course is right for you. Um, but obviously any questions do please reach out to the team. We're here Monday to Friday and obviously can set up a meeting with you to discuss the course further if it's right for you as well. Once again, my name's Nick. Um, it's been a pleasure. And uh, once again, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel. And we hope to see you on one of our courses. Bye for now.